Welcome to Truth and Life Urban Ministry, where faith and activism meet. Here's your host, Brother Leon Prophet to the streets and pastor to the people. What's going on, Facebook Live family? What's going on, Truth and Life Urban Ministry family? What's going on? Yes. So today we have had the Electoral College. The people have spoken. And so today, I'm not going to lie, man. I was kind of wishing I could just do this a podcast. But the Lord said, hey, I want you to go online. I want you to get on the air. I want you to go on, on live. And do this because I think the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that these four years have been a hard four years. And one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that what we have seen has been prophetic. That's the that's the God knows truth. This moment has been prophetic. From the time that President Trump got elected all the way up until now, this time has been prophetic. Because the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that God used him, God used the prophets to speak what was going to be revealed. Because a lot of things that were going to be revealed for this year was that 2020, clarity, a year of clarity, a year of, you know, people say a 2020 vision. And so the crazy thing about it is that it was things that people didn't like. You know, the one thing that I say about this president, this president got us to pray. I'm serious. This president forced us to our knees. And the one thing that you don't realize is that the White House, as well as the church house, is a conduit that goes into our nation. What comes out of the White House goes into the nation. What comes out of the church house goes into our communities and nation. And so the one thing that the prophets were saying is that God is going to give President Trump another four years. But the one thing I want you guys to understand is this, is that prophecies, some prophecies come with conditions. The church had its chance during those four years to begin to speak truth to power, to begin to speak words that would turn this nation around. But it didn't. It all started when I told you guys that there was going to be a rise of radicalism. And I told you that. I told you that on this platform. I told you that. Because when you started having pastors fight against ordinances, temporary ordinances to keep the people safe, talking about Rodney Howard Brown, that was the, that was the domino that started this whole thing. Because now you are seeing radicalism like never before. And the one thing I want you guys to understand is this, is that you got to look at the language. You got to look at the language and the terminology that is being projected right now. The new term for nigger right now is Black Lives Matter, Democrat, Rioter, Antifa. You know, and now looking at those urban cities. And this is the one thing that I want you guys to understand and see. You are seeing right now. Charismatic witchcraft at its finest. And the crazy thing that gets me is that you even have black pastors. You have black ministers who are co-signing on this whole Kool-Aid thing. Seriously, they drank the Kool-Aid. And one thing I want you guys to understand is this, is that you cannot, we cannot legislate lifestyles. We can't even take and try to use our biblical principles to try to legislate lifestyles. Because my question to you is this. Have you seen that in the book of Acts? If we call ourselves Christian people, if we call ourselves kingdom heirs, if we call ourselves kingdom culture, have you seen the apostle Paul try to mix with the kings of that age? Was he trying to mix it up with King Agrippa? Nah. 
Was he trying to mix it up with Caesar? Matter of fact, the Jews and the apostles got mad at Jesus because they saw the power of Christ. And they were like, okay, Lord, are you going to overthrow? Are you going to overthrow Rome? Are you going to overthrow Caesar? Because we see what you can do. And one thing that we as ministers, as prophets, we cannot align ourselves. We cannot align ourselves with any political party because we have to stand with the people. And the crazy thing that I saw during this whole election season is that very prominent voices aligning themselves, their voices, their platforms, their gifts with an agenda that's not even biblical. It's just agenda. And that's the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that when you begin to sell your prophetic gift to agenda, you have sold out. I don't care what color you are. You have sold out. You sold out your gift. You sold out your soul. You sold out your community because you're supposed to be for the people. And so the one thing that I will say is this, President Trump spoke prophetically, seriously. When he said that he was going to drain the swamp, the one thing that was revealed was the evangelicals. And that's the God knows truth. Because the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that there were prophetic men and women, evangelical men and women, who basically because of their platform, because of their alliances and allegiances, even though they probably did have a word from the Lord that was different. They had to go along and go with what the crowd was saying, just like the Republicans right now. Because at the end of the day, you got to look at what is at stake. If I take and say something that's contrary to what Kenneth Copeland is saying, he ain't going to let me on his stage. If I say something that is contrary to what Sid Roth is saying, I ain't going to never be back on that show. If I say something that is contrary to what any of these other prophetic houses and any, any, any of these uh, uh, churches and ministers and pastors that allow me to be on their platforms on a bigger stage than mine, then I'm not going to have access. I'm not going to have relationship. I'm not going to have the money. And so the one thing that I wanted you guys to understand is this, is that you have white pastors who can preach black, who can shout black, who can sing black. And we even have black people that can sing and dance all day long. But at the end of the day, like I said, black ties matter just like black lives matter. And if you are sowing and financing your own oppression, you need to get out. You need to take your ties, take your family, take them hips out of that church. And yeah, I said it. I dare any pastor to, 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 to try to you know dispute me on that. Because at the end of the day... Yeah, you call yourself worshiping. You can worship in any other house. But you're financing your own oppression. And this has gone on for too long. And the one thing I want you to know is this. They will give you religion. You go to any church, they will give you religion. They will give you a feel-good feeling. They will have you come into a corona environment, tell you to trust God. And then you leave that environment and then you got to go to the hospital. And the crazy thing is you can't even pay for your funeral. God forbid you die. But they will give you that feeling, but they won't give you truth. And what you're seeing right now is nothing but conspiracy theory. I say this. You don't like it. Nobody likes it when God says no. I don't even like it when God says no. But the fact that he does say no says it right there. The fact that God says no is, 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 is indication that he is guarding us from something. God has said no to this re-election, to that prophetic word that these prophets spoke presumptuously. And yes, they are false prophets. They spoke presumptuously. And some of them have even used their platforms to, to pronounce curses. To pronounce curses. But I'm here to decree to you this day that you cannot curse what God has blessed in the name of Jesus. And I make those words null and void and I decree in the name of Jesus that any curse word that has come against people that have voted for Joe Biden, those words are null and void in the name of Jesus and you do not have to be afraid because the prophet spoke presumptuously. Yeah, I said it. 
He spoke presumptuously. And the word of the Lord says that if a prophet speaks presumptuously, you don't have to be afraid of him or her. And I'm telling you right now, man, you are seeing charismatic witchcraft at its finest. I'm seriously, seriously. That's the God knows truth at its finest. Because now, you know, the crazy thing is I saw people that were praying that God would stop the vote. And what you're pretty much saying basically is, Lord, stop them nigga votes. That's what they say. <laughs> I'm serious. Lord, stop the nigga vote. Lord, stop them niggas from counting them votes. <laughs> Seriously. And I'm, 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 I'm being over the top with it. But if you look at the cities that were being targeted, you got to understand that there were mainly people of color and black people in those cities. The Republican Party has been suppressing the vote for years. And the crazy thing about it is that nobody wants to talk about what happened over the summer. What happened over the summer was President Trump appointed a new postmaster general. And what he did was he started taking sword machines out, slowing down the mail. So what you think what was going on over the summer? People trying to get ballots, they can't get them. And yet you complaining about mail-in ballots, mail-in votes in the midst of a pandemic. But the people st still showed up. I was like, hey, you know what? With all this mess going on, <laughs> I'm seeing people, you know, saying this is a mail-in ballot, but it's actually a trash box. I'm like, nah, uh, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to mask up. I'm going to go vote in person. That's what I did. As a matter of fact, my whole house did that. And it was people voting like Obama was running again. And that's the God knows truth. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that let me, let me take you over the scripture because I know I didn't said a lot. Hold tight. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And so the one thing that you have to understand is that when God is going to move, he is going to reveal it to his prophets. And so do I believe that that there was an opportunity for President Trump to have a second term? Yes. But I do believe that that prophetic word end up falling to the ground because the men that gave that word, as well as the word that was given about that man and the church at the time did not meet the conditions. You did not meet the conditions when it came to George Floyd. You did not meet the conditions when it came to Ahmaud Arbery. You did not meet the conditions when it came to Breonna Taylor. And then, and then you have to look at the words that this president has said about marginalized communities. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. So my question is, is that if the evangelical church and the Republican parties is so much about family values that how is it you can demonize Bill Clinton, who was the president at the time, about Monica Lewinsky, but yet give President Trump every type of pass permissible. And the only thing that was on the Republican agenda was, in my opinion, just the judges. And the crazy thing that you put up is the crazy thing that didn't give you what you wanted. So you ended up compromising the office and what you compromised to keep you will lose. You compromise the office. You compromise the presidential office. These prophets compromise their prophetic offices, apostolic offices, pastoral offices. Yeah, I said it. Compromise. And what you compromise to keep, you will lose. But the one thing that I will tell you about the church is that we are fickle. We are fickle about pastors and ministers, just like we are fickle about about artists that we love. One minute we can demonize Alicia Keys, and then the next minute we can take and love her. One minute we can demonize uh, R. Kelly, and then the next minute we go buy his album. One minute we can sit up here and demonize President Trump, and then the next minute we sing in his praise, and he the most pro-black president ever. But yet he spoke about Africa, calling it a shithole country. Talking about Colin Kaepernick and the NFL protesters, five of them sons of bitches. And the crazy thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that when a prophet speaks, he's supposed to speak the mind of God. 
and not be aligned with any political party. And so a lot of people are saying, well, you, you, you don't, you know, you okay with sin. <laughs> My question is, no, nah. I look at it like this. It's not the fact of somebody being okay with sin. It's the fact of look at the sin that you allow. Because you can't complain about the thing that you allow. But if your brother is, is, is being tripped over it, then you shouldn't, you should put it away. But the one thing that I've seen is that I've seen the compromise. You can sit up here and, 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 and talk about people that vote for Joe Biden. You can sit up here and talk about President Obama. We can sit up here and talk about Bill Clinton. And sit up here and talk about the other ministers who did not go the way. But yet my question is, you call yourselves the moral majority. What about Franklin Graham? People talking about Reverend Warnock right now, saying that he's he's a socialist, calling him all kinds of things, saying he's another Jeremiah Wright. But I tell you this, he got more integrity than than Franklin Graham. That's the God knows truth. He got more he got more character than the person that he's running against. And the crazy thing about it is that they won't give you the whole story. When it came to Lori Leffler, she was in Reverend Warnock's church on a Martin Luther King holiday. So if he was all of that, then why would you sit in his congregation? These are the things that they don't want you to know. And then you have all these media groups, One American Network, Max News, Fox News, and I'm telling you, man, the crazy thing is, is that it's nothing but agenda. And then the crazy thing, people started protesting against Fox News when they called the election for Joe Biden. I'm like, how, 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 how crazy can you be? You can't have it both ways. Seriously. And then you had the senators and attorney generals that signed on an amicus brief to be heard before the Supreme Court, Texas, suing the other states. Tell me that is not sedition. Tell me that is not another state trying to start a, a civil war. Seriously, because Texas don't want nobody telling them what they're supposed to do. So why is Texas telling people what they should do? Because the crazy thing, if it was massive voter fraud, then why is it that you only point it out in Democratic states? Why is it that Mitch McConnell won? Why is it that Lindsey Graham won? Senators won, but the president lost. But his own cyber security chief said that this was the most fair and safe election. And then he got fired. His own attorney general said that there was no evidence of voter fraud and he had to resign. And so the one thing that I'm starting to see right now is that there is not only nationalism in the church, but Trumpism in the church. And what you guys have done is that you have made him a god. And God said that I will have no other gods before me. And I don't care how much you pray. God said no. He said no for the 49 cases that you lost. He said no for the two Supreme Court cases that you lost. He said no. And one thing that I'm curious is now you have the Proud Boys on, in Washington. Now you have MAGA protesters in Washington are they now going to be labeled rioters? Are they now going to be labeled Antifa? Because that's what was said about Black Lives Matter. And now they're ripping down Black Lives Matter signs at churches. That's not being uh, publicized. Except on certain news outlets like Roland Martins. But the one thing that I want you to know is this. Is that there are some prophets that if you begin to look at the Bible... That God has sent that I will I will send a lying spirit. I will be a lying spirit unto that prophet. And I believe that there was a lying spirit that came over these prophets that prophesied presumptuously that became false prophets because the conditions weren't met in the church. It wasn't met because you stay silent when it came to the destruction of black bodies. But yet you were willing to take black money. Paula White was pretty much saying that there's, there's not going to be any sustainability if you don't send her $3,500. And then she had the nerve to call on angels out of Africa and South America and strike and strike and strike and strike. 
turned into a remix. Same thing with Kenneth Copeland. And then the crazy thing that, that I distanced myself from the word of faith because when I began to look at it, all of our fathers in there was pretty much white except for Fred Price. That's the God knows truth. Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Smith Wigglesworth. And then when I began to see that he is allowing Michelle Bachman on his stage and, the, and they started talking about the LGBTQ plus community and started preaching fear and how you don't want your kids going to the bathroom with these people. And I mean, I mean, just demonizing. So my question is, if you can do that with one community, what happens when it's my community? Because you heard what they said about illegal immigrants and people coming over from Mexico. So my ha what happens when you start talking about us? When you start talking about the black men and they have been talking about black people. What you think they saying about Black Lives Matter? And so even when it came down to this church, to this house, the one thing that I want you to understand is this, is that this church right here, God gave me this vision in the midst of a protest. And I made up my mind because the one thing that happened with me was I had the opportunity to be a part of a multicultural church. I had that opportunity. But when it came to Black Lives Matter, <laughs> I had a black pastor tell me straight up, that's of the devil. But I'm going to tell you this, you will not see me or hear me have white supremacy come out my lips, not these black lips. Because I said at the end of the day, I'm like... <laughs> You can say all day long that Black Lives Matter is of the devil. I'm going to be in the midst of that protest and I'm going to be in the midst of supporting my black people. Because my thing is, is that if you feel like that you can just save the black soul and ignore the black body, we got a problem. Especially when you're a white church coming into a black community and want to open up shop. But don't want to address the things that happen in that community. and You just want to give them a grace message. How much grace do I need not to be black? Seriously. And a lot of people say you don't need to incorporate your culture into, into the kingdom or into faith. Man, please tell that to a Jewish person. They ain't going to hear that crap. So my question is, why is it that we have to separate? Why is it that the black man has to separate his culture from his faith? Because I look at it like this. If I have a divine appointment, what you think I'm going to go in? Any other skin? No, I'm going in this black skin. And if you can't res respect me or receive me, that just lets me know I'm not supposed to be there. Seriously. And I've heard people say, even black people say, that this whole thing with racism, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's going to be dealt with when we go to heaven. I'm like, nah, hey, look, I understand that. It's a whole lot of things that's going to be done away with when we get to heaven. But for right now, I have to live and I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight with my platform. I'm going to fight with my voice because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, just like sister Ann said, record breaking numbers voted at the end of the day. God has called me. He's called me to represent the community. He's called me to represent these people, this church, and I'm not selling it out. I'm not selling it out for agenda. I'm not selling it out for five minutes of fame. I'm not selling it out for a piece of ass. I'm not doing it. Because at the end of the day, I have to answer to God. And at the end of the day, I don't want to be labeled as one of Jezebel's prophets. I don't want to be labeled as one of President Trump's prophets. I don't even want to be labeled as President Biden's prophet. Because at the end of the day, the calling that God has given me lasts longer than a four-year term or eight-year term. And so when you begin to align yourself with nationalism and Trumpism, you have made an idol. You have made another idol. You have made another God. And you've given your praise to that God. And the crazy thing about it is that people are capitalizing off of it. All you got to do is just say the right words, the key words. Wearing a mask is unconstitutional. Wearing a mask is slavery. Wearing a mask, you a Nazi. I'm serious.
That's all you got to do. And then you have people flock. And then all you got to do is start preaching, saying, you know, yeah, the election was rigged. And, da, 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 and people are going to come. If you build that type of crap, they will come. And they are coming. They come into a whole lot of churches. Because the one thing I will say is this. Even the Klan thought they did God's service. Just like these people. Just like these white supremacist groups. This, just like these militias. And if you think for one instance that a race war and a class war is not brewing up right now, it is. And the crazy thing that I want you to know is this, is that what you have, and I'm going to break it down like this. You have a poor white man and a black man fighting over one slice of pie. And I even throw in there... Uh, um, a Hispanic man, you got three men for slice fighting over one slice of pie. Meanwhile, you got a rich white guy who got nine slices telling a white guy and telling a Hispanic guy, yo, man, you just like us. Don't let that nigga get that pie. Come on. Come on, go in there. Get in there. You just like us. No, you not. Because he has nine slices. You fighting over one. What you need to do is y'all need to team up and take his. But the crazy thing about it is that I want you guys to look at this and see it for what it is. Everybody that is saying you need to get out here and, and, and revitalize the economy, they staying home. Why are you getting out here risking yourself as, as an essential worker? Seriously. And I'm going to tell you, man, some of, it ain't no glory in that. Because you constantly live in fear as an essential worker. You constantly living under the gun as an assert as an essential worker. And the crazy thing about it, it's either your money or your life. Because hey, you can have an underlying condition and they still want you out here. Unemployment don't ran out, they fighting over stimulus. And the crazy thing about it is that, yo, y'all can take and hurry up and try to get to the Supreme Court to turn around the election, but you are fighting still whether to give people money to help them in this season, and then the church is backing all of that mess? That's the problem that I have, because I tell you this, and I'm going to say it again, yeah, they were false prophets, and, and, and President Trump is not King Cyrus. I don't care who says it. Yeah, I said it. Because here it is in, in, in 1 Corinthians 14, 29 and 33. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. There was no judgment when it came to these prophecies that were given. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let him first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that there was confusion. Nobody judged this. And the fact that they couldn't judge it, the fact that they couldn't have a different word says it right there. Because you will not have access if you go against some of these prominent people. Because like I told you, the church game is like the drug game. And you got kingpins at the top. You got your mid-level guys. Then you got your low-level guys. And then you got your guys that are hungry trying to get in. And that's how it is when it comes to this whole church game. It's like the drug game. It's like a pyramid scam. Seriously. The people at the top is the ones that's eating. And everybody on the bottom is giving their money up to the top and trying to get a recirculation. It's like trickle-down economics. Seriously. But they ain't going to tell you that. I'm going to be the realest nigga you know that's in this thing. Seriously. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. I said it. But at the end of the day, that's what it's about. You did not see this and it was confusion. But God said, hey, he wants peace in all his churches. You ain't seeing no peace. You definitely ain't seeing no peace when you can have a pastor during this year. Let's not call white white supremacy, white supremacy or white privilege, white privilege. Let's call it white blessing. And you got black people sitting in them, them pews. You got Hispanic people sitting in them pews. 
And then the crazy thing about it is that you got these people so daggone brainwashed, they forget what color they are. Seriously. Some of you have forgotten that you come from the black community. Some of you have forgotten that you come from the Hispanic community. Seriously. And I'm going to give you this. Deuteronomy 18.22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. There it is right there. How many ways does God have to say no? That is the thing that the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of Paula White. Don't be afraid of Kenneth Copeland. Don't be afraid of anybody in the word of faith right now. Because if anybody spoke saying President Trump is going to have a second term, yeah, they probably going to change that word around and say, hey, the word of the Lord, I, 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 I believe that God is saying 2024. I'm telling you, man, it's a game. And the crazy thing about it is that they know that we desperate. And the crazy thing about it is that they know that, that people are living in fear. And the crazy thing about it is that people are desperate because the world is changing. The world is changing. And white people are afraid that they are losing their country. They are losing their community. They are losing power. I'm telling you, man. Yo, Mexicans are not taking all the jobs. Automation is. And the crazy thing about it is that you get mad when you see Mexicans and, and, and nobody doesn't even want to say anything about the person that brings them in, about the person that pays them under the table. The, the, the fact that you can have a boss that can skip over union guys to get cheap labor and then the cheap labor ends up building up his money and then next thing you know, they're bidding on contracts and underbidding the guy that brought them in. But nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about the CEO that, that takes jobs and outsources them. How is it that you can have a computer and you have, and you talk to somebody in India? But yet, I'm a job creator. And these are the guys that are getting the tax breaks. And yet you getting $1,200 while they getting millions. So I'm telling you right now, man, we have got to wake up. And see how this politic game goes. Because it's all about money. It's all about influence. It's all about access. And the church cannot be involved in that. If you're going to be a politician, be a politician. If you're going to be a pastor, be a pastor. But you're going to have to kick that nationalism out the church. Because the one thing that I see with nationalism is the same thing that the Klan was saying. And Sister Ann said, don't let fear contaminate your faith, people. I like that. You can't give in to the fear. Because the one thing about the fear that these so-called men of faith are bringing, oh, they're they going to come, they're going to take your kids. They, you know, they're going to take your jobs. They're coming after your guns. They're coming after your rights. They're going to shut down the churches. And I even, I even disputed about a post that, that um, CBN the Christian Broadcasting Network put up talking about if Joe Biden gets in office, how he's going to begin to take away school, Christian schools accreditation. Hold on. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that most Christian schools are private. Seriously, most Christian schools are private. And the crazy thing about it, you can still operate as a school without accreditation. So there's the fear coming from a Christian broadcast network that should be merging with Newsmax. Because at the end of the day, you're doing the same thing that they're doing. Seriously. 700 Club 2. Pat Robertson 2. I mean, man, the things that are being said and the meltdowns that these people are having right now. Because, you know, when, when it first... I ain't going to lie. I'm going to say this. Election Day was like that movie Groundhog Day. Seriously. It was like Election Day was happening and, and, and now I'm glad to get off the roller coaster. Now I'm glad to get off the ride because of the Electoral College. Now I can wake up from this. Because at, when it first began, it was like, okay, 
Well, we're going to wait till the Electoral College. We ain't going to believe what the media said. I don't care what they uh, are, are projecting. But, you know, four years prior, believe the news. Believe what the newscasters are saying. But now don't go your way. I ain't going to believe the news. You can't believe what they say. But then you want to believe Newsmax. But then you want to talk about, you know, believing own network. CBN, 700 Club, believe them. But the one thing I will say is this, is that God does have a way of using things to speak prophetically, whether it's science, whether it's news, because we had an indication. I'm going to give you this. When Kobe Bryant died, those those were the first indications of coronavirus. They were reported in a newspaper when Kobe died. It didn't get as much play because everybody was thinking, oh, man, it ain't going to come over here. But that's the problem with us in America. We always think it can never happen to us. And we are very vulnerable. And so you have people that have capitalized not only off of coronavirus, but also off of this election, also off of Black Lives Matter. People, man, they will figure out a way to make a dollar during desperate times. And that's what President Trump is doing right now. You still people are still giving into his uh, legal defense. Dude, man, please, y'all better get y'all's daggone money back. Man, that boat done burnt that sea. The Supreme Court done handed him down the last one, and now the Electoral College happened. What court is going to hear the case? Seriously, ask yourself that. What court is going to hear any case now? Because now I'm like, yo, it's done. And then you have brothers, I'm not going to lie, man, who are saying that it's bigger than Trump, that, that if you can't see, you ain't got no revelation. I'm like, man, dude, please wake up. You have strong delusion like the Bible says. But at the end of the day, people are getting what they want because God is giving them over to a reprobate mind so that they can do those things and believe those things. Because at the end of the day, if you believe a lie long enough, it becomes truth. And the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And whether it is freedom unto Christ or whether it is freedom into a lie. Because the devil is a liar and the father of it. Seriously. And, and the crazy thing is, is that not only do you need to hear their words, but see their actions. Look at what was being said about President Clinton. Look at what was being said about President Obama. The one thing that I appreciate about President Trump is that he brought it all to the surface. The racism, the white supremacy, the hypocrisy, he brought it all to the surface. President Obama couldn't do that. Neither could President Clinton. Seriously. And even though we saw a mock dummy of President Obama hanging from a noose burning in front of a church. And then you have the audacity to say that we stand for God and country. You just like the Klan. The only difference is you can speak in tongues and, and have a prophetic gift and still be racist. And that's the one thing that we can't accept. And the one thing I'm going to say is this, is that racism is a team sport. And every team needs a chaplain. And just like there's fivefold in ministry, there's fivefold in racism. There's a fivefold of uh, ministry in racism. Racism has its prophets. Racism has its apostles. Racism has its teachers and pastors and evangelists. Racism has that. And the church needs to repent for its part that it is played. That's the God knows truth. The church needs to repent for the part it has played when it comes to racism, when it comes to slavery, when it came to Jim Crow, when it came to the black codes. But like I'm here to tell you this day, like Fred Price said, there will never be reconciliation until there's recognition, until you can recognize the hurt of your brother, until you can restore there's never going to be reconciliation because at the end of the day, why should you reconcile with something that you feel like that you're better than? White people have always felt like that they were better than blacks. That's, that's the attitude that has always been. 
And the crazy thing about it is that there may be some modern day people today that don't feel that way, but that's the attitude of the country. Always been the attitude of the country. How you think they've been able, man, to really whittle down certain things when it came to black people? Seriously, how is it that we can take and have a president that says he's done more for blacks than President Lincoln, but yet won't allow an anti-lynching bill to come, into, to come into fruition? It's being blocked. Seriously, how is that? And yet we have black people, black ministers that came for the photo op that says he's the most pro-black uh, pro president ever. And you got to look at everything that he's done for the churches. My question is, what has the church done for the communities? Especially people that's been marginalized. What has the church done about Breonna Taylor? What has the church done about Amar Arbery? What has the church done about George Floyd? And the church that I was affiliated with, man, wasn't even going to issue a statement. And that's the reason why I left. Not even a statement, but yet want to tell me that Black Lives Matter is of the devil. I get the fact that you may have a problem with the organization, but the same shouldn't be that way because Jesus even left the 99 to go get the one. My question is, have you seen the Beatitudes in President Trump? Have you seen the Beatitudes when it came to evangelical churches? When it came to people of color? I haven't seen it, but yet... Say the black soul. Say nothing about the black body. But in the meanwhile, give me your black tithe. And that's how it's been. Let me give you the definition of presumptuous. Failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. There have been prophets and apostles and pastors and teachers who have went beyond what is appropriate. And that's the God knows truth. Hold up. Let me see what Wayne Roy said. Taking money, not to mention what has not been done to raise our boys into men. I like that. I like that. So, you know, it begins with us. And so at the end of the day, even when it comes down to raising our children, we have raised our children in an environment that says that a line needs to be drawn. Either you hear or, or you against and I get it. I, I get that other side. I totally get it. Because when you feel like that you're losing control, when it feels like that 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 all of a sudden now something is getting ready to be taken away from you, you're going to fight. And why do you think that now you have Republicans in Arizona talking about, you know, are you willing to die? So my question is, are you willing to die for the Republican Party? My question is, are you willing to die for President Trump? Because I'm going to tell you right now, he ain't dying for you. The Republican Party is not the party of old. To all of my black friends. It's not the same party that freed the slaves. I know a lot of you don't like that. But at the end of the day, you got to come to grips of what is being said out here. And the Democratic Party ain't no different because trust and believe they will use us. So my question is, is that I like the sentiments of putting this person in office. We need policy. I like the fact you can paint Black Lives Matter on anything, but I need policy. What are we going to do about these rogue police? Who's going to be courageous enough to take on qualified immunity? Because trust and believe, it has to come down, do you, like, do you love your family more than you hate me? It has to come down to that because if you start litigating against these rogue police and you start putting their pensions on the line and you tell the FOP ain't nothing you can do about it, I guarantee you it will stop because at the end of the day, it's going to be like, do I hate this nigga enough to kill him or do I want to keep my pension at the end of the day? He going to want to keep his pension because I look at it. How is it that Eric Garner doesn't make it to the station? How is it that Philando Castile doesn't make it to the station? How is it that Amar Arbery can die in the street? How is it that George Floyd didn't make it to the station? How is it that Jacob Blake didn't make it to the station? But yet you have white terrorists that make it to the station. 
I'm telling you, man, something got to give. Something has to give. And it starts with us. It starts with them. It starts with ministers not aligning themselves with this political machine agenda, because in the end of the day, you can't sit up here and legislate lifestyle, because even though we call ourselves a Christian nation, there's more than one religion in this nation. You have Jews that are here. You have, um, you know, nation of Islam that are here. You have Muslims that are here. You have Jehovah Witnesses that are here. You have Satanists that are here and atheists that are here. But yet in the same token, you feel as though that it needs to just be Christian all the way around. So God can bless our nation. Man, please, if we start having integrity again, God will bless our nation. If we start having ethics again, then God will bless our nation instead of taking our religious convictions and using it as a means to be prejudiced against people. Seriously. And to be racist against people all in the name of God. The Klan could, could, could preach on Sunday and then lynch a nigga Sunday night and not even sweat about it. And they call themselves doing God's service. So that just lets you know, it's, it, man, you can be saved and still racist. You can be saved and still a murderer. You can be saved and call the Proud Boys Patriots. You can be the president and talk about Charlottesville and say there were good people on both sides. Seriously. But at the end of the day, are you going to begin to speak truth to power? That's the problem that I had with Paula White. You're the closest one to him and you won't say Jack. But you want us to pray. Man, we've been praying. We've been forgiven. I'll tell you, man, that's the problem that I have with us black people, man. We so forget. And the crazy thing, man, Paula White, she stole her church from a black man. Stole it from his wife. Look up Zachary Timms. Look how she got that church. And the crazy thing about it is that the black people that are drank the Kool-Aid. Seriously. Drank the Kool-Aid. Whole lot of people drinking Kool-Aid by the gallons. And the crazy thing is, is that it's strong delusion and they believe a lie. I don't know how many ways you got to tell people, hey, your guy didn't win. Seriously. How many ways you got to say it? Your guy didn't win. But yet at the end of the day, they ain't trying to hear that. And God is like, okay, fine. But the one thing I will say is this, and I'm getting ready to get off. Is that Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, they have the same window. We're going to see what you're going to do in these four years. Because trust and believe. If you do not honor what you said that you was going to honor and what you said that you was going to do. If President Trump gets reelected in 24, oh, it's going to be a four years of vengeance. Four years of vengeance on those cities. Detroit, Milwaukee, Philadelphia. It's going to be a war on black people. Plain and simple. And it's going to be on every, it's going to be a war on every person that fought him. And because trust and believe, he like an elephant, he'll never forget. Elephants never forget. So trust and believe what I say. And the reason why this word of the Lord fell is because the conditions were not met. Prophecies have conditions. Some of them do. Just like blessings. There are some blessings that are conditional. If you do da 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 da. Just like Naaman. He had to go and listen to the word of the prophet in order to be healed. He had to go dip. That was the condition. The conditions for this prophecy, a re-election didn't happen because the conditions weren't met. And now the nail has been in the coffin. The Bible says out of the mouth of three witnesses, let every word be justified. You had two words that came from the Supreme Court and then you have the Electoral College met today. Those were the three words that justified that he is not president. And come January 20th, Joe Biden, he will be inaugurated. So I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have to pray. 
Because trust and believe, it's always going to be somebody that's twisted. They're going to try a stunt. Trust and believe. I'm serious. I remember, man, this old movie called Stalag 13. And they pulled off a tremendous stunt. And the Nazis, it, it was, they had to hide a guy. They hit a guy. They, they, what they did was they used a smoke bomb, a smoke canister to go hide the guy that, that the uh, Nazis were going to kill. And the crazy thing is they checked the daggone camp, the, the, the POW camp. I mean, they checked it from top to bottom. They couldn't find nothing. Come to find out this dude was all the time hiding in the water tower. And that's the God knows truth. So the one thing I want you guys to understand and know, man, is that pray, pray, pray for President elect Biden. Pray for uh, Vice President elect Kamala Harris because I don't put nothing past people. I'm like, yo, when you got MAGA protesters with guns and Proud Boys all together, and that thing looked like Antifa, and it looked like some riots are, are going to start, man, trust and believe. I'm telling you, I see it. Reg, man, please don't say my name. <laughs> that nickname, it don't even sound good coming out of a grown man mouth anymore, seriously. But I appreciate you, brother. So, but anyway, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. These pro prophets and ministers, they, they spoke presumptuously. And I'm going to be real enough to tell you, man, that this preach game ain't no joke because you have preachers right now. You know, they their thing is like Walmart. You know, they praying to God that God will shut down some of these little churches, little churches like mine, little churches like the next brother. Because they feel as though that they're getting in the way. I'm like, man, please. The Bible says that the harvest is right, but the laborers are few. So how is it that we can work for God? And then you telling God, God, yo, we don't need him. That's corporate. That's gangster. Seriously. Because they ain't talking about Jehovah Witness. They ain't talking about the, the nation of Islam. They talking about Christians. So we got to begin to wake up just because it sounds good. Don't mean that it is. And the one thing that I'm going to tell you is this, is that there is kingdom language masked with nationalism, masked with racism. And all you got to do is know how to speak the language of church and you can have anything. Seriously, there is a language of church. But you also have to know that there's a language that we need to begin to speak for the people. Because who's going to stand for the people? You have COVID that is ravaging our prisons. Who's in the prisons? Our, our black people. There was a protest that happened in Gander Hill. There's going to be protests that's going to be happening in Smyrna. But right now, man, we need for the religious voices. We need for evangelicals. Hey, if you want to get behind life, why don't you protest about what's happening in COVID with these in these prisons. Seriously. And I get the fact that you pro-life. But why do you want to see our men die? You talk about the babies. But man y'all shut up for Tamir rights. Seriously. So something got to give. And I do have a gripe with the news media. Because they've been the ones that have shielded a lot of these police. And you take and you demonize the victim. Making them look like that they were the reason why they got killed is because of their life. And then you want to bring up all the dirt that they did. But yet in the same token, when, when, when the shoe is on the other foot, I don't see that. When it came to Muhammad Noor and Justine Damon, I didn't see that. You demonized the police officer of color, but you said nice things about the white victim. But when it's a black victim, it's always... 99% of the time, a smear campaign. Smear them in the court of public opinion because when the cop, the white police officer, gets before the grand jury, then he gets off or she gets off. You couldn't hardly find anything about both of them, John. So they had to make up something. Ooh, it smelled like weed in his apartment. Justify. Seen it with everyone, man. Eric Garner. Philando Castile. How many more, man? Seriously, how many more? 
Jacob Blake. So something has to give. And so at the end of the day, man, like I entitled this, you know, message, I ain't a false prophet. Nigga, stop with the madness. Yes. Because I'm getting sick and tired of seeing men of color try to protect white supremacy and white privilege because you've been given access. They're giving you a mic and they expect you to, to run defense. Seriously. And at the end of the day, man, I just question. I question it. I'm serious. I question you. Seriously, I question you. Because at this point right now, you see it for what it is. You see it for what it is. And we know that you see it for what it is. And so now, man, all of a sudden now, it's like, oh, you got to have revelation. Now you want to try to talk morals when you ain't had no integrity. How you going to try to tell somebody what's right and wrong and you ain't got, and you lie yourself. Stop lying. Stop lying to yourself. And stop lying to us. Because at the end of the day, all it was was lies. Going to take down Obamacare. I got something better. Man, please. I have a plan for black people. The platinum plan. You might as well call that crap the cabbage and cornbread plan. Seriously. The watermelon plan. The fried chicken plan. Page and a half of nothing. Nothing specifically for black people. Nothing. And then the crazy thing, man, you got some of these celebrities co-signing. And one thing I'm going to tell you about the black celebrity, the black celebrity is not a black leader. The black celebrity sometimes has been so disconnected from the black community that they forget that they black. Because all they fans is white. So who you think they going to cater to? They want to keep that money coming in. I'm serious. I get it. Totally get it. Protect the brand. But at the end of the day, protect the brand, but not at the, the, the expense or the cost of your soul or your community soul. Seriously. So I'm, I'm like, man, look, I like Ice Cube's gesture, but ain't no way in the world I would have met with them people when I know they call that shit the platinum plan. Seriously. Seriously, and that's the end of the day, man. You got to look at it. Platinum plan. Oh, get them niggas something, something, something shiny. Give it to them. Really? I'm telling you, we got to wake up. And, you know, I know I ain't been pastoring that long. I call them, I consider myself a street preacher. But the one thing that you're going to get with me, I'm going to be real and I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I cuss. But I don't curse. I don't curse like I've seen some of these prophets out here that put a curse on on your house because you didn't vote for because you didn't vote for uh, President Trump. I'm not that dude. I'm going to pronounce the blessing and I'm going to break the curse that they spoke. Because at the end of the day, it's about what you believe. Seriously, it's, it will always be about what you believe. And the reason why I cuss is because I'm very passionate. When it comes to, to the black community. I'm very passionate when it comes to people getting duped. I'm getting sick and tired of seeing people be cannon, cannon fodder. Getting eaten up by the machine. Church machine. Political machine. I'm tired of people getting eaten up by the machine. I'm serious. I'm telling you man. Yo something got to give. But the one thing that I will say. It starts with us. Who's going to be the prophet. That is on the Lord's side. Who is going to be the prophet. That stands for the community. Who is going to be the apostle. That stands on the Lord's side. Who's going to be the pastor. That stands on the Lord's side. Who's going to be the one who stands for the community. And not agenda. Not nationalism. Not Trumpism. Not even Joe Bidenism. Not even Harrisism. Not even Obamaism. Who's going to be that person. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. And the one thing that I realized is that if I'm going to represent Christ, I'm going to represent Christ in all facets. And I'm not going to sit up here and use my conviction to take and demonize people that don't believe like I do, that don't act like I do. 
It's for me to be the example, to be the light set on a hill. Not for me to take the Bible and bash people. Seriously. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, man, please. I didn't see Jesus. You're going to take this healing. Or you're going to take this deliverance. I didn't see Jesus do that. I think the one thing that I love about Jesus' example is that he could have condemned the woman in adultery. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And that woman ended up following him. The person that got thrown out, the blind man that got thrown out the church, that got thrown out the synagogue. You know, he was like, Lord, who is it? Who is he that I can worship? I'm him. I'm, I'm the one. And he worshiped him. He didn't, he didn't even go up to the, to the Pharisees and Sadducees and say, hey, knocking on their door. Yo, hey, hey. Y'all going to take him back. No. Mm -mm. Jesus didn't do that. He didn't force it. But the one thing that I did see that I liked about Jesus is that he called them on their stuff. And that's the God knows truth. He called them on it. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is that sometimes you're going to have to flip over tables just like Jesus. Sometimes you're going to have to chase the money changers who, who, who don't want to do the people no good. You're going to have to chase them out, out of the communities. You're going to have to call them on their stuff. But at the end of the day, it's about who's going to stand for the people because Jesus saw the people being used. He saw his father's house being turned into a house of merchandise. And black people have been the merchandise of the church for years. Black people have been the merchandise of the political system for years. And we still ain't got nothing. Had Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, James Baldwin and still got nothing. President Obama still got nothing. So something has to give. Starts with us. And I'm going to tell you this. It has to start with our economic houses. If we want to sit up here and try to build, we have to make sure that we have economics first. And we have to work together as a team. Because if we don't, we will die by default. Because racism is a team sport. Why do you think they bombed Rosewood? Why do you think they bombed? Black Wall Street. We had our own. And if we did it before, we can do it again. But we got to start giving, stop giving our money to those outside our community. The black dollar circulates <laughs> six hours before it's given to another community. Six hours. But yet we have, what, over a trillion dollars net worth? If I'm not mistaken, it circulates 31 days in the white community, 28 days in the Asian community, 18 days in the Hispanic community, six hours in the black community. Something got to give, man. It starts with us. But I'm going to tell you this right here. Don't follow them men. Don't follow them preachers that are complacent about you, that are complacent about your community, that are okay with you financing your own oppression, because like I said, they will give you religion, but they will not give you truth. Truth that will free your mind. Truth that will help you have an economic house. They will not give you that. So yeah, I said it. And at this point right now, I'm not gonna lie, man. Ain't no way in the world I'll have my black hips in the white church. Sorry. Seriously, I'm like, nah, man, it's unsafe right now, especially if you ain't talking about what's happening in my community. Seriously, if that pastor is not going to speak about what's happening in the community and he want to try to just dodge around it. Nah, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I no, I got to go someplace that's going to talk about what's happening and give me a strategy. Give me the strategy to maneuver for the time in which I'm in right now. I'm serious. I can't sit up here and talk about, oh, we sending money and, and we got to bless Israel. 
Nah, man, we, I need Wilmington to be blessed. Seriously, I need Wilmington to be blessed. I need my house to be blessed. I need the blessing on the west side. Not in Tel Aviv. Seriously. But that's what you get. I'm telling you, wake up, man. Because I done seen enough. I ain't going to lie. I know that my demeanor and the things that I say, I probably done canceled myself. Wow, my man, my apple acting up. <laughs> I probably done canceled myself. But at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I don't care. I'm not selling out. Because at the end of the day, my thing is, I want, I want, I want all of us to be blessed. My success is your success. To see you prosper, to see your family up, to see your kids in school, to see your kids graduate, to see your kids get married, to see you become a grandparent. That's my success. And so at the end of the day, man, I'm telling you, wake up and see these people for what they really are. False prophets, people that spoke presumptuously. And the only real prophetic word that came forth was from the president's mouth talking about he's going to drain the swamp. And what was drained was seeing all of them. All of them. Politicians, preachers and all. All of them. And so, man, just pray. Pray for me because I know what I'm saying is unpopular. I had to stop with some of the protest. Because I had to start thinking like, yo, you know, they have a tendency, man, to make a strategy against certain people. And then with COVID out here, I'm like, nah, man, I, I, I can't risk it. Seriously, I can't risk it being in close proximity because, you know, the one thing, a mask isn't 100%. Just like a condom isn't 100%. You got to guard your eyes. You got to guard your soft tissues. And a lot of us, man, we have the mask on, but we don't wear it properly. We put it under our nose. We put it on our chin, but yet we got a mask on. So I'm telling you, even the church houses, even though you may be having church outside, some of that still isn't safe. And you got to trust God. Yes, you do. And you can't be in fear. But in the same token, I'm going to have wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing. Faith isn't. Wisdom is. And so with that being said, Christmas is coming up. Make sure you guard your families. If you're going to have people coming over, make sure they have a COVID test. Make sure that thing is negative. Make sure they get it done this week. Because I don't know what's going to happen the week of Christmas. Seriously, because I know, man, people are tired. They probably be like, man, they're going to get these results after Christmas. You need them before Christmas. So get it done this week. Get the swab test. Get the nose test. It's testing sites all over the place. So there's no excuse. But when you wear your mask, wear it properly. Start taking vitamin D. I'm serious. Start, you know, if you can get prescription grade vitamin D, get that. Because you got to keep up your immune system. And that's the God knows truth. So, you know, yeah, we have to start business and we have to patronize them. Don't look for the brother man discount. Yeah, you're right about that. That's the God knows truth. That's the biggest problem that I have because when you start looking at generational wealth that has been in the city of Wilmington, you have to look at Ho-Ho Mart. How long has Ho-Ho Mart been in Wilmington? Seriously. How long has Lucy's been in Wilmington? How long has GMP sub shop made money off of black people? Seriously. We need more black business and that's just on Market Street. We need more black businesses to come back. We need more. We need black businesses to start up. Seriously. So I'm telling you, man, it starts with us. We got to begin to get our houses together, but we got to keep ourselves safe. So I'm telling you, don't be the sacrificial lamb. Don't be the sacrificial lamb in church. Don't be the sacrificial lamb for, for these politicians because they don't give a flip about you or your kids. And that's the God knows truth. Seriously, they care about that money and they care about that vote. So, hey, I'm telling you. So, guys, um, you know, if you're tuning into the Brother Leon show, I'm actually doing um, um, a segment on relationships. So hopefully I can get a hold of a family law lawyer so we can talk about child support. And we'll definitely talk about divorce. 
and everything because you have to know the reasons why we divorce. You know, what's fair in litigation? You know, you know, are we splitting in half? You know, I mean, it's a whole lot of things that we could talk about. So I want to try to exhaust everything when it comes to the relationship. And if, um, you know, you're looking for a church, we have an online church called Truth and Life Urban Ministry, a place where faith and activism meet. So our church is a church of activists, and we are the ones that go out here and protest. We are the ones that talk about the system. We are the ones that talk about what is happening right now. Right now, I'm doing a series called Changing the Narratives of Our Lives, and I'm actually talking about changing the narrative of men. And so we started off talking about temptation. Because you have to begin to see that there is a temptation out here that will try to draw you away from being the man that God has called you to be. And then we also looked at Sunday, the calling of men and how you're called to something greater than you. And how God has called you and regardless of where you may be, God formed you, God knew you and he's called you. He's called you to be a son of God. He's called you to manifest and you may ask yourself, manifest what? Manifest purpose. Because vocations change, jobs change, but the purpose of God over your life never changes. And that's the God knows truth. So the biggest question and the biggest temptation that men seek, uh, you know, have today is whether or not they're going to be the man that God has called them to be. Because there are so many definitions of what manhood is. There are so many things that we could say how men should be. But the question that I raise is, who are you going to give your power to? Because at the end of the day, it's about a man giving his power to. And whatever he gives his power to, that's what he will become. So my question is, are you going to give your power to God? Are you going to give your power to divinity? Because divinity is what you were made from. It's what's on the inside of you. And you can change the history. And you can be a trailblazer. So... I want to encourage you. I say thank you guys for today and I am out. Peace.